everybody, it's Tony Moore back again for our afternoon session here on the Virtual Free From Festival, second day. Uh, already we've had one whole day of amazing food demonstrations um, and great uh, interviews with the uh, Meet the Maker sessions. And today this uh, we've, we've had the two most delicious mornings and the day just keeps getting better. Uh, the challenge for me, of course, is this food. Uh, it looks and sounds incredible. I just can't get to taste any right now, and it's making me very hungry. I'm really thrilled to say that our next guest is Emma Hatcher, who is a Leith's-trained cook, author, and writer, determined to show uh, that uh, with food tolerances and sensitive guts uh, that you don't have to feel restricted when it comes to what you eat. She creates gut-friendly recipes and content for brands, and her debut cookbook, The FODMAP Friendly Kitchen, was published by Hodder and Stoughton in 2017. In her newsletter and on her blog, uh, she can eat what? That's uh, well, one uh, word there, she can eat what.com. She shares simple seasonal recipes every week, uh, which she styles and photographs from her flat in South London. And we are very excited to find out that today she's going to show us how to make seasonal passion fruit cupcakes with <laughs> coconut cream icing from her cookbook, The FODMAP Friendly Kitchen. So, without further ado, let's hand over to Emma Hatcher herself to take us on this fantastic and delicious journey. Emma, over to you. Thank you very much. What a lovely intro. Um, so yeah, as you very kindly said, um, my name's Emma. Um, I'm a cook. I'm an author. I've had a sensitive gut for as long as I can remember. Um, I was diagnosed with the very sexy thing that is IBS at 14, something that every teenager desires to have. Um, and kind of cue loads and loads of years of um, trying to work out what uh, triggered my gut. So to start with, I was told to cut out gluten, as so many people are, uh, to cut out dairy, coffee, chocolate, the list kind of went on. And then finally, at the age of 21, uh, it's quite a few years ago now, I uh, was told about the low FODMAP diet. So for a very quick um, overview, it's quite sciencey, but hopefully some of you have heard of it. Um, if you haven't, please ping questions throughout this. Uh, so the low FODMAP diet is a diet uh, recommended by the NHS for people with IBS. Um, so FODMAPs are found in all different kinds of foods. And the kind of premise of the diet is that you um, cut out all the foods that are high in FODMAPs, uh, working with a trained dietitian, cut out all the foods that are high in FODMAPs, uh, reintroduce them back in kind of group by group, work out which are your triggers. Um, for example, garlic and onion are big triggers for me. Uh, and then you kind of are on the maintenance phase, so you, um, or personalization phase. So you work out what your key triggers are uh, and kind of go from there. So my big aim or my kind of mission, I guess, in life is to, do exactly that and show people that if you do have food intolerances, if you can't eat things like gluten um, containing foods or garlic and onion, you can still have really, really, really tasty recipes. Um, so the recipe that I'm going to make today uh, are the passion fruit cupcakes with whipped coconut cream icing from my cookbook, um, the From My Friendly Kitchen. I'll do a little shameless plug here. Um, so they're gluten free, they're dairy free and they're uh, low FODMAP as well. So passion fruits are in season right now and they're absolutely delicious I love them they pair beautifully with coconut um so we're just we're gonna go old school today and make cupcakes uh, kind of like fairy cakes size I guess with these are the um cases that I'm using and they're really really easy they're a mixture of or you kind of put all your dry ingredients together you put all of your wet ingredients together stir them all in one put them in the cupcake cases and then bake so they could not be easier um and then the second bit is a really kind of clever trick with coconut cream or coconut milk to make a really nice dairy-free icing. So your standard um, icings are really, really short, can be really sugar heavy, obviously, uh, and will contain butter. Most of the time they contain dairy. So this is just kind of a really nice little uh, simple trick if you wanted to use something like coconut cream instead. Uh, so first off, I'm going to really simply line my cupcake cases, um, line my cupcake tin with my cases. So this recipe makes uh, 10 kind of heaped cupcakes or 12 kind of flatter ones. You do you, whatever you fancy. Let's whack those in there and then just put this to one side. I'm going to mix your colours just because I can. And they're really nice. They're really nice things to make with kids. They're really nice things to make if you're an adult. Um, so popping those to one side, I'm actually going to do 12 and go a bit flatter. You're going to have to bear with my quite small kitchen. My surface space is limited. So if you see me running out of shot, that's where I'm going. To put various things. So this is going to go in here. Cool. And then our next stage is simply to mix together all the dry ingredients. 
Um, so I'm using ground almonds in this, which are a really, really brilliant ingredient to um, add loads of moisture and flavour into gluten-free baked goods. Sometimes I think when you can bake gluten-free, it can be sort of dry and crumbly and just all very squidgy and gummy, but these kind of offer a really, really brilliant texture. Um, so I've got ground almonds that are going in uh, and we'll share the recipe um, afterwards. I'll talk with Margarita and the team about how to do that. So ground almonds are going in. I'm going to use this spoon actually. Again, sift, I, if you can be bothered, you don't even have to be bothered to sift if you don't want to. Uh, put through the kind of the smaller bits and then I'm going to be a bit lazy and tip the bigger bits in. Uh, so ground almonds have gone in. Uh, I've then got my flour. So I've got gluten-free flour. Um, in the book, I actually call for brown rice flour and potato starch. But I've tried this with um, a gluten-free flour blend, uh, supermarket one, and it works really well as well. Um, because you've got such a high amount of ground almonds, it gives you quite a bit of leeway with the flours. Um, so I'm going to add that in as well. And then I've got a pinch of salt that's going in. As a rule of thumb, always really brilliant to add salt into your sweet goods. Um, it just kind of helps bring out that sweetness. I think it's in the kind of a miss or something that people miss quite often. And it's a really kind of good trick. My sieve's a bit wet, so this is proving a bit tricky, but we're gonna get there. Right, flour's going in. What have we got next? Baking powder. Um, so two teaspoons of baking powder are going in this. Uh, as well, gluten-free baked goods quite often need that extra bit of lift. So this has got two teaspoons in here, which kind of really make them rise beautifully and make them light and fluffy as you would like a cupcake to be. So that's going in. Where is my baking powder? then got sugar that I'm going to put in here. So I've got 75 grams of um, sugar. You could use brown sugar. You could obviously, uh, to make this refined sugar free, you could use coconut sugar. Um, I'm going to reach ooh, up here and give this a little way. So something like coconut sugar um, or brown sugar adds the most lovely kind of caramel flavour to these cupcakes. So that's why I love using it. I think it works really brilliant with, brilliantly with those kind of tropical flavours. So, grab a spoon. I'll just check that I'm doing this right. Yeah, perfect. So I've got 75 grams that's going in here. Straight away, she's been a bit generous. <laughs> a little too generous. Perfect. this back up then also the zest of the lemon I've got going in here um, I think again lemon pairs really really beautifully with uh, passion fruit lemon and cakes just gives everything a lift and I think quite often when you eat a really delicious cake and you think oh why is it so delicious and you can't quite put your finger on it more often than not it has some kind of lovely citrus added um, so I definitely think that's a really kind of good trick as well so pop the sugar back up here I could fish out my lemon do you know what, for the purposes of this demo, I'm not going to put a lemon in here because uh, my boyfriend actually broke my microplane grater the other day and we are yet to buy a new one. And I can see my grater over here and I can see that it's actually going to get quite a lot of the pith in it. Uh, so I'm going to avoid the lemon for the time being, but put, a rem uh, put the zest of a lemon in here and I promise it will be absolutely delicious. Um, so sugar has gone in and that is pretty much our dry ingredient. So I'm going to kind of stir those together. Really, really simple. And then a separate bowl, I'm going to whisk together our wet ingredients. So there's actually passion fruit pulp um, in the wet ingredients here, which I love uh, because it's just a really, really brilliant way to, again, add moisture into cupcakes. And I should say, you'll notice in the recipe that these cupcakes say to be baked for 25 minutes, which sounds like a really, really, really long time for cupcakes. Um, but actually, because you've got the ground almonds in there and because you've got the passion fruit, it works really well and you need to kind of, it's quite a wet batter and you need that kind of extra time in the oven. Um, so worth noting if you're thinking, what on earth? That doesn't sound right at all. Uh, so that's going in over there. And I'm gonna get my egg. So I'm just using medium eggs here for this recipe. 
haven't tried making these vegan actually without eggs um but i wonder if you could also use something like a chia egg or a flaxseed egg in this um if anyone has tried that please do let me know um back in here then got almond milk that's going in you could use give me my hands quick rinse you could use any kind of dairy free um or low format milk that you like and um, i tried what else have i tried in here rice milk works really well um or again you could use something like lactose free milk if you didn't need it to be dairy free let's pop that in there as well did i measure it correctly oh yeah not bad perfect i've got a teaspoon of vanilla extract that's going in and again, vanilla in cupcakes, I just think really helps make them sing. It's a really good addition. Um, it's not cheap, vanilla is getting more and more expensive. So obviously use when, um, use when it's a special occasion, but it, if you can, it's a really, really nice addition. So this is a teeny tiny quarter teaspoon uh, measurement. So I'm just gonna put a teaspoon in there. Add that all in. And then I've got my 60 ml of passion fruit pulp. So we actually, I say we, I very kindly, my boyfriend very kindly got these from the green dresses this morning. Um, so passion fruits are in season now, they're beautiful. Um, these actually didn't have, so normally when you, when people ask kind of what you look for in a passion fruit, you're looking for this kind of really sort of pimpled skin. Um, so that generally means that they're riper um, and they're more juicy, but actually these ones, even with kind of the harder skin now, uh, because I baked a batch of these earlier, are, um, they're still really juicy and delicious. So I used um, the recipe called 60 ml, which I've said is about two um, passion fruits, but these are a bit on the small side. So I use two and a half today. So I'm just gonna add that into my wet ingredients as well. Thinking, what can you see? Let's move these unsexy scales out. Let's put that to one side. Perfect, passion fruit, just grab a nut. And you're after this lovely juicy middle sort of seed bit, um, which I'm gonna go straight into my wet ingredients that's here. Let me get another spoon. Perfect, so I am actually gonna measure this out. I'm just gonna pop it on here and I'll scrape it straight in. But so on the uh, low fog map fruit side, so passion fruits are um, obviously low fog map, uh, but which, and they're a really, really brilliant option for this kind of, this time of year, because actually there are so many beautiful seasonal fruits that are sadly um, high in fog map out this time of year, like apples, blackberries, um, and all of that. So passion fruits are really, really nice uh, ingredient if you are following the low fog map diet to include, um, and I love it. Works really well with pineapple, Obviously, um, mangoes, actually, I've seen it in the supermarkets around as well. At the moment, let's just pop that on there. I'm going to need another bowl. Let's use this one, actually. So I should say, um, also getting this is uh, coconut uh, oil. So it just helps add moisture in, and it's a really, really lovely flavour um, that goes along with the coconut cream icing. Uh, and goes along with the kind of tropical flavors of the passion fruit. So two, uh, two tablespoons of coconut oil is going in there as well, straight in my wet ingredients. And then I can use this lovely thing to add up my passion fruit pulp. So let's go for one more half because I think it's gonna be similar to what I used earlier. Have a little look, let's try and do this delicately. <laughs> that's like everywhere which could prove tricky how much have i got we're well, just under we'll treat ourselves with four more grams perfect but right, let's move all these things out of the way get it looking a bit clean around here tidy work surface i'm a very messy cook but tidy work surface it's always good to have. So passion fruit pops going straight in my wet ingredients in here. I'm gonna get a fork and I'm gonna whisk all of that together. And then I think, I think, dare I say it, that's all the ingredients. So let's whisk that all up. Double check my recipe very quickly. So we've got our ground almonds that went in the dry along with the flour, salt, baking powder, brown sugar's gone straight in there. 
zest of a lemon if your boyfriend hasn't broken your microplane and you can zest one in there. Uh, an egg I've got on here, I've got 60 ml of almond milk, um, my passion fruit pulp, coconut oil, um, and my vanilla extract. So it's all in here. So I'm just going to whisk, whisk this all together. Um, as a general rule of thumb, always so much better if you whisk all your, your dry ingredients rather than kind of just whacking them in on top um, because you can kind of, well, actually you can kind of over mix your batter, but with gluten-free baked goods, you don't have to worry about that as much. Um, because you're you're not working the gluten, the gluten's not in there. But four, for safety's sake, we'll give it a quick whisk like this. Perfect. And then I'm just going to put that straight into my dry ingredients. Very satisfying sound. Pop that in. Perfect. And give this all a stir. How much you can see. There's your two bits. And again, as I mentioned, you don't have to worry about overworking it because you haven't got the gluten in there. Um, but at the same time, you don't want to whisk it too much. So just until it's beautifully combined, you haven't kind of got those streaks of ground almonds left in there. Smell really, really good at this point as well. I love when everything comes together. And it is, it's such a simple recipe. It's almost too simple for me to be showing you, but it's just, it's so easy and it's such a good one uh, to make if you just want something small and zesty and refreshing. And I haven't, you know, I haven't actually tried baking this in a, um, like an eight inch cake tin or a seven inch cake tin, but I imagine it would fill an eight inch cake tin. I should try that out. Um, because it'd be a really, really beautiful cake as well uh, to sort of slice into and maybe have with the whipped coconut cream on the side instead of on top. So. I need for a clear bowl. So I've whisked all together. It's quite a wet batter, as you notice, but generally gluten-free flour um, and ground almonds actually need a bit more moisture. So uh, gluten-free flour always, will always suck up the extra moisture. So quite often, if you are subbing gluten-free flour in uh, to a normal cake batter um, for sort of plain flour, then I'd always add a teaspoon or a tablespoon of milk or extra liquid um, to kind of compensate for the gluten-free flour that will suck up that extra moisture. Um, so I'm gonna grab my cupcake cases that are in my tin. See, perfect. And then I'm just going to spoon it straight in. Um, let's use, yeah, let's use that spoon. Perfect. And again, you don't want to fill these um, right to the top because they will obviously rise. So you're going for kind of like three quarters of the way full, um, which is kind of always the way with whoop, just making a mess of this. Uh, which is kind of always the way when you're making um, cupcakes or muffins or something like that. And I think getting a little bit messy is all part of the fun of baking, isn't it? So I add these in. Uh, so I've got my, my ovens on the hotter side. So I've actually got mine set for 160, even though it's probably around 170. Um, but uh, so pop these in the oven. Uh, and I, as I mentioned, so around um, kind of 170, 180 you could do. Um, but if you want a bit of a flatter top, then actually I found out over time that 160 does work a bit better for gluten-free bakes. Um, pop these in for about 25 minutes. Uh, I check around the 20 minute mark and they'll look done and you'll, they'll look really golden and you'll think, I mean, well, I've got to take them out. But actually, because of that passion fruit um, pulp, they will need a bit longer. So resist and make sure you um, make sure you test them as you go along and actually do you know peter in um the bake off you know he says about how he listens to cakes and i've started doing that now and it's actually quite a good trick and it works so if you take them out and they're bubbling and they sound like there's still loads more liquid in there then pop them back in for a couple more minutes um because it definitely works so i'm just filling these about three quarters though full be speedy and i'll whack them in the oven and then i'll show you show you what they look like and we'll move on to the icing try and do this as speedy as possible. So close team, so close. Something very satisfying about baking at the weekends. Perfect. For the purpose of this demo, I'm going to leave it there. Add a little bit extra into that one. Obviously you want them to be as even as possible. 
and then we're going to whack these in the oven and then i'm going to clear down my side and i'm going to show you uh this coconut cream icing as well so popping these in the oven My time is on for 20 minutes and I'll check them as we go. I'm going to throw everything into my sink. It's next to me. It's out of the way, it's out of the way. Give it a quick wipe. Hope that you can't see the perimeters of the chaos that's going on. Perfect. So then, as I mentioned, coconut cream icing. So, um, I actually bought three tins of coconut cream this morning, uh, coconut milk this morning. Um, and you well, bought them yesterday actually, and you put them in the fridge overnight for 24 hours um, and then they'll kind of separate. So you'll get that thick cream bit at the top and you'll get um, the liquid at the bottom. At least I hoped that that would happen. Uh, but I think now supermarkets must be putting in possibly an emulsifier or something uh, in the coconut milk that makes it so that that doesn't happen and it stays in one kind of cohesive mixture. So instead I'm using coconut cream, which is basically the top, um, acts the same as the top of that bit that you'd get in coconut milk anyway. So I've got a bit of coconut um, milk at the top of it in here and I've got like a carton of coconut cream which does the same thing which I've uh, lifted out the top and I've reserved the uh, liquid for, you could use it for smoothies and um, you could put it in your porridge actually that'd be really nice. Uh, so don't throw it away but uh, we don't need it for the purposes, purposes of this demo. So then with this all I'm going to do is just whip it up. Um, so you just kind of want it smooth, you want it um, a tiny bit sweetened so you could use um, icing sugar in this for uh, to make it refined sugar free. Um, I'm going to use a tiny bit of maple syrup in this. And then all I'm going to do is spoon on top of the cupcakes, add a bit of um, passion fruit pulp on top because I think it's nice uh, for you to look at cupcake and know what's in it. So that kind of passion fruit sign is always very good. Um, and then we're going to go from there. So let me grab my uh, electric whisk. And we'll plug it in and this will be a bit runnier than your um than your kind of buttercream thick uh icing sugar icings um because of the nature of it but actually i think it still looks really really good on top of these cupcakes so apologies for the noise i'm going to give it a quick whisk kind of see just from that see how thick and lovely that is although my exposure might be a bit off um so you might not be able to if I move it back but it's still got quite a few lumps in it so kind of work it for a little bit um and you'll think that those lumps are never going to go but I promise you they will go um but at this point actually I'm going to add in just a tiny tiny drizzle of maple syrup um just because then you kind of got that sweetened effect as well. And the maple syrup again, it kind of gives you that really lovely um, kind of caramel flavor that goes really nice with the tropical side of things. So I'm gonna go back in and whisk just for a couple more minutes. stop mid route again i'm also going to add in some vanilla extract and um, you can add in kind of vanilla bean paste or the extract and actually no because i've got it here i'll add in um some extract again obviously the more liquid you add into this the more chance you've got of it kind of um i guess possibly not emulsifying and seeping out but hopefully that wouldn't happen um but it kind of being too runny on top of your icing so you kind of don't want to go too overboard but you want to add it in enough kind of slowly um of things like the flavorings and the sweetenings um, sweeteners to kind of just give you that extra kind of hint. So we're going to go tiny splash, not going to measure. Go in again once more. getting there. Now you could add in um, cinnamon to this as well, which I've done in the past, uh, which actually is really, really lovely. Um, and again, pairs beautifully with the flavours. Um, but I'm not going to do that today. I'm going to keep it simple. And we're almost getting there. I'm getting notifications on my phone. Hmm, no, <laughs> never a good idea. I'm going to ignore it. Uh, so you've got this uh, here. 
which is where I'm at. Try not to be too messy. I'm this tiny few lumps you can't see because of my exposure. So I'm just gonna go for one more minute and then noise is over. <laughs> Tiny more maple syrup. Perfect. And there you have it, and you've got a really, really lo a lovely whipped. Um, Oh, strength. Whipped uh, coconut cream icing. So let's clear this mess. Let's show you the cupcakes in very much a blue pizza style. Here's one I made earlier. And here you go. This is what they look like. Let's move this up here. Move the things. Well, if you've gone shop perfect, you've got cupcakes and shop. Um, so as you can see, they rise beautifully, they're golden. These are really tiny little cupcake cases. Um, so they are actually quite domed. I made 10 kind of more domed ones, um, although I've just tried the 12 slightly flatter ones now. Um, yeah, and they're beautiful and they're kind of perfect bite size. They're great for kids, great for adults. Um, you would, I'd like to think that you'd never notice that they're gluten-free um, or dairy-free or low FODMAP. Um, and they kind of dispel all of those myths that if you do have food intolerances that um, food tastes bad because it doesn't because it can as this festival sort of wonderful people shows that it can still be really really delicious and um, so I'm just going to spoon a bit of icing on top of each of these cakes uh, if you wanted to um, be very fancy about it you could definitely pipe the icing on and um, it's actually thick enough uh, looking like this that you could probably pipe it on but I'm just going to spoon a tiny bit on top and then I'm going to cut some passion fruits in half um, and decorate them very quickly I'll show you a couple and then that's it easy as that um God, I, I need endless spoons I'm gonna get one more hear me rattling around okay so I've got a couple of spoons and I'm just you see how it is quite thick and it is that kind of lovely texture I'm just gonna spoon a tiny bit on top of each one it's like a lovely little dollop if you need a bit of a smaller spoon for this but if you kind of lift it up like this and you kind of pat it down and work in a circular motion a bit better than I'm doing now uh, then you can kind of get a really little lovely a lovely dome on top of your cupcakes perfect that'll do for now and I always think um I think Nigella said it as well on her uh cooking show the other day that if something is homemade you want it to have imperfections you want it to be you want it not to look like it's been bought straight from the shops um so decorate these as you wish if you'd like to throw extra things on them um or just keep them plain actually they'd be really lovely that way as well um so let me do one more we've got a couple straight on it's probably about a tablespoon's worth of icing on each one again i'm just sort of patting around Going to cut my, that was less pretty, I'll show you the other one close up. Uh, Going to cut my passion fruit in half, if I can find a surface to chop it on. Put in here. Oh, they smell so good. Grab, <laughs> I need to grab another spoon, but it's quick enough to give up on food. I'm going to have to use this teaspoon uh, that we've got here. And I'm just, just going to drop a tiny little bit on top of each one. You don't want too much, otherwise it will fall down, but just a tiny little bit to decorate. And there you go. There you have it. Let's wipe myself down. Let's move things out of the way. There you have uh, gluten-free, dairy-free, low FODMAP, refined sugar-free as well, passion fruit cupcakes, which with all of those things sound like they taste terrible, but I promise, I promise this is proof that you can still have really, really tasty food. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed. That was uh, an absolutely brilliant and such um, well presented demonstration that we ha haven't got any questions. You managed to ask everyone, um, answer everyone's <laughs> questions. Um, yeah, I guess that's a good thing. I can, I can talk a lot. 
Um, <laughs> good. I'm so pleased. Well, I hope, yeah, I hope people enjoyed watching. Now, this recipe is in uh, your FODMAP friendly kitchen book. Yes, it is indeed, um, along with a hundred other odd um, recipes that are in there as well. Uh, so I guess I wrote this book about oh, three years ago now, four years ago now, and um, I guess it was kind of that proof. So I, when I was diagnosed with IBS, I was told to follow the diet. I remember being kind of given a two-page leaflet that had a big long list of all the foods that I couldn't eat on it and kind of panicking and thinking, where the hell do I go from here? And over time, I guess I want to give people the resources that I never had when I got diagnosed with IBS. Um, and yeah, again, to show people, because I think, I think I might have said in the last demo, food to me is so much more than just um, something that we, I think it brings people together. Uh, I think it's fun. I think it, mental health, I think so much is kind of wrapped up in that empowerment through food, um, which is why festivals like this are so brilliant because they are showing you uh, that actually you can still eat all this amazing food. And I hope that this, um, yeah, I hope that this book kind of shows it as well. We, we actually now have a question. Danielle oh. has a question for you. Um, she said, are you adding the seeds of the passion fruit in as well? So I noticed you added some at the very end on top, but uh, do you put them in during the, the, uh, the baking process? Yes, yes, sorry, should have clarified. So yes, yeah, so the passion fruit pulp, so it calls for about 60 mil of passion fruit pulp, and that includes all of the seeds. And um, you can, I mean, you can do it without the seeds, but you'd need quite a few more passion fruits to just have that kind of liquid. But I actually prefer it with the seeds because I think you get a really, really lovely crunch as you're eating them. Um, and they're kind of studded throughout the cake. I don't know because of my light, they're kind of studded throughout the cake, which I love as well. Uh, so mm. yes, seeds in too. Well, there you go, Danielle, um, <laughs> answers your question. If anyone else has any questions uh, before we have to sadly let Emma go, I uh, do put them either in the Q&A box or in the chat room box, and uh, I will ask them on your behalf. Uh, so what have you got lined up for Christmas, Emma? Oh, God. Uh, do you know, we've only just just sorted, actually. So now, obviously, with households, uh, so going home to see my family, which is very nice. Uh, but I can't, I still can't believe that it's a month. I, where has this year gone? I know it's been the craziest year of all times, but where has this year gone? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so home for home to see my family, which would be lovely. Haven't put the decorations up yet. I put a poll on my Instagram actually saying, should we just get the decorations up this weekend? And it was overwhelmingly, I think it was about 80% said yes, versus no, you have to wait until the 1st of December. So we might, might do the Christmas decorations today, but I'm still just not sure. Have you got yours up yet? No, I haven't, but, um, well, I, well, I have actually, I've got my, um, <laughs> my, my tree here that, uh, I flew this in from Norway uh, yesterday Beautiful. and I've got this, my hat hanging up here. If I just move my head. <laughs> very nice. Very nice. And a few little lights behind me. Um, listen, Emma, it's been fantastic to, uh, spend the last half an hour or so with you. Um, and seeing how you make just the most delicious, uh, oh, cupcakes there. Would you, would you just remind everybody of all your socials and how they can find you? Yeah, so I'm at She Can't Eat What um, across all channels. Uh, so I have a website as well. If you just search, if you search Emma Hatcher, actually, it'll come up. Uh, or She Can't Eat What. Uh, again, yeah, across Instagram, Facebook, um, Pinterest, all of that lot. Um, and I've got a newsletter, which I am actually being very good at and making sure that I send up once a week uh, with new kind of gluten-free, uh, low format recipes on there as well. So please come and say hi, any questions, um, anything I rambled about today that you didn't quite get, then um, yeah, just come and say hi and I'd love to chat. Fantastic stuff. Thank you very much, Emma. Well, have a great Christmas. I look forward to seeing you at the next Free From, whether it's virtual or whether it's in the real world. Uh, it Fingers will crossed. still be a treat. Yes, absolutely. Fingers crossed. Thank you so much. Okay, that was Emma Hatcher and uh, those delicious passion fruit cupcakes with coconut cream icing. Oh, my God. Uh, now, we are going to have some more music performance for you. As uh, you've seen so far today, we've had uh, performance from some different artists through the, um, the different stages of the day. Now we have uh, our good friend, Mr. Mark Sullivan, who's actually played a number of times at the live Free From festivals over the previous few years. So I'm going to hand over to him to play us a little bit of uh, music. Then we're going to take a short break and we will be back at um, 3.30 with our next demonstration, which is with Anna Heil. And she'll be telling us about boosting your bio. I don't know if I'm going to pronounce this right. Biome? Biome? I'm sorry if I'm, I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, but B-I-O-M-E. Basically, fix your gut for better energy, mood, and digestion. This will be a talk. So that's Anna Heil at 3.30. But 
leading us uh, into the break, we have live music now from Mark Sullivan. Hey guys, Mark Sullivan here. I'm really gutted we all can't be together at Free From Festival this year. I'm going to play you a couple of songs. I'm going to start with a cover called Easy. <laughs> Sounds funny, but I just can't stand the pain. Well, I'm leaving you tomorrow. Seems to me, girl, you know I've done all I can. You see a big store and I'm bow proud. That's why I'm easy. Easy like Sunday morning. So easy, ah, ah, ah. easy like Sunday morning. on me When I paid my dues to give a prayer Everybody wants me to be what they want me to be I'm not happy when I try to fake you It's amazing It's a new song of mine, it's an original song, it's called Had My Mind and Nothing, and it should be out just after Christmas, I'm finished now, so yeah, 
fingers crossed, it should be out in January time. So this is called Have My Mind Move. <laughs> Great 